I'm Luke Hansen, an associate editor for America, and this week I'm reporting from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, where the U.S. continues to detain 166 men. This afternoon, I'm standing in Camp X-Ray, a camp that only lasted for the first four months of the prison's history, built for 311 men who were suspe suspected of terrorism. In this very place, is where that iconic photo was taken of the first detainees who arrived in Guantanamo Bay wearing orange shackled and uh, wearing goggles which was a form of sensory deprivation while they were transferred from Afghanistan and other places around the world. Just last month Bishop Richard Pates of Des Moines, Iowa wrote a letter to Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel raising concerns about the continuing existence of the prison in Guantanamo Bay. In the letter Bishop Hates called on President Obama to follow through on his promise to finally close the prison. He also raised concerns about the fact that 85 of the detainees currently here have been cleared by the Obama administration for release or transfer. He encouraged the president to immediately follow through on those cases. He also said that the remaining prisoners here should have a trial if they are being accused of wrongdoing or they should be released. Finally, he raised concerns about the ongoing hunger strike here at Guantanamo and the use of force feedings. This week, America sent me here to pro provide coverage of what's going on with the prison today. America has been concerned about the United States response to terrorism, and this is our part of our coverage of uh, U.S. counterterrorism policy. This week, I had the extraordinary opportunity to meet with a number of people who work inside the prison camps with guards, with people who prepare the meals, with chaplains. I also had access to tour a number of the prison camps with a couple of exceptions. Camp 7, the camp where the high value detainees are currently detained, um, is not a place that's very well known by the people who work here or to reporters. We did not have access to Camp 7, but we did tour the camps where most of the detainees are currently held. A couple highlights. The guards shared the challenges of their work. What it's like, like to be splashed in the face with human feces, and what it's like to deal with the threat of being splashed as they walk through the units. One guard said, I don't look at these detainees at all as my enemies. I look at them as detainees, and we have a mission to carry out, and that is to detain them safely and humanely. I, I learned from talking to guards that it can be a difficult mission to carry out because of President Obama's commitment to closing the prison. President Obama has said that this is a mission that is not necessary, that has hurt the United States' international standing. It's a place that's been a recruiting tool for terrorists, and that the force feeding of prisoners, what he called the force feeding of prisoners, is not who we are, and that we should ask, why are we doing this? This has made it very difficult for people who were given this mission, who work long days, are separated from their families, and are doing the best job they can. It's made it very difficult for them to continue to do this work, especially hearing President Obama's words and facing much of the international criticism that has been leveled against the prison. When we talked to the cultural advisor, who has worked here since 2005, who is Muslim, and who has known many of the detainees for the last eight years. He said it is a time of hope for the detainees. Uh, they are very encouraged. They're aware that their hunger strike has put the prison back in the news. It has encouraged President Obama to appoint a new envoy to work for the closure of the prison. Senators have recently visited the prison. The envoy recently visited the prison. And they feel encouraged that sometime soon, which cannot come soon enough, some of the men who are cleared for release or transfer will begin to leave the prison. It was an extraordinary week, and America had rare access to both the place, the prison camps, the detainee hospital, and so many of the people who work here day in and day out. America will continue to provide coverage of the Guantanamo prison and I will be following up with a number of stories in the form of podcasts and articles 
both the people that I met and the perspectives they shared. So I encourage you to follow this coverage at americamagazine.org backslash Guantanamo. This is Luke Hansen reporting from Camp X-Ray, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba.